Comsol Multiphysics contains several tools and functionality which can be used to create a 2D geometry for your model. This includes several built-in primitive geometry objects for commonly used shapes, such as rectangles, circles, and blocks, which can be modified to have the dimensions and positioning that you want. You can make changing the settings for any of the objects you build easy and more efficient through using parameters as you create your geometry. All of this, along with performing geometric operations, such as Boolean, transformation, or partitioning operations, enables us to build complicated geometries. In this video, we will show you step by step how to create a 2D geometry in the software, as well as review some tips and best practices to keep in mind as you are building your geometry sequence. Here in the graphics window, you can see the geometry that we will be building in this tutorial. And it is a rectangular plate with an array of several slots. There are several ways we could create this geometry. And the way we do it in this demonstration is so that we can highlight different geometry features and capabilities within the software. At first glance, when you're looking at this geometry, you may want to start by drawing the large rectangle and then creating these slots within it. But it's actually better to do the opposite and start with the inside of the geometry with these smaller internal objects and then work our way outward towards the large rectangle. With that being said, let's get started. Here in the new window, since we want to start with a blank model, we will click the blank model button. And then since we are creating a 2D geometry, we want to add a 2D component. So we click Add Component and select 2D. I also could have done this by right-clicking the root node in the Model Builder window, then selecting Add Component, and again 2D. And this goes for any action that we perform in the software. The equivalent operation is always available in the respective model tree item. To start building the geometry, we can click on the Geometry tab, and you can see under our primitives list of built-in objects, we don't have a slot object to choose from. We can, however, create it by creating a union between two circles and a rectangle. So let's start off with the first circle and select circle. You can see a node for that was added under our geometry node. And the settings window here, we can modify several aspects of the object. Let's build it with the default settings for now. And we want to change the radius to be much smaller. But instead of entering a numerical value in here, we could actually specify the radius by using a parameter. To create the parameter, we can go to the Home tab, click the Parameters button. And in here, let's call our radius parameter RAD, and then enter 1.25 centimeters as the radius. And you'll notice that I specified the unit for length in brackets. Otherwise, it would take on the software's default unit for length meters. So now we can enter that for our radius. We click Build, and then Zoom Extents, and then Zoom Out a bit. And we have our first circle for our slot. We can also use parameters to specify the position of it. So let's go ahead and add a few of those. We can call these X0 and Y0 to denote the original position of our geometry. And let's go ahead and add those in the respective fields. And let's move the circle up and to the right by its radius so we can more easily decide on the height we want for the slot. So we can add the radius parameter to both in our position fields. And we are all set with our first object. So now we want to create the second circle on the other end, but instead of creating a brand new circle, we can actually use a transformation operation, copy. So first we select the object we want to copy by clicking on it in the graphics window. And since we want to keep the original object here, we leave this option toggled on. Now under displacement, this is where we define how far we want the copied object to be displaced from the original. 
and whatever value we enter here for the y displacement will end up being the total height of our slot. So again, instead of entering a numerical value, let's add a parameter for that. Let's use h to be the height, and we'll say it's 10 centimeters. So now we can return to the copy operation, and we can enter h. But for this to be the total height of the slot, we need to subtract what is the length of the diameter of the circle. So we subtract two times the radius. And there we have the other end of our slot. Now let's create the rectangle connecting them. So we go under primitives and select rectangle. Let's build it with the default settings. And you can see the default settings are far too large for our geometry. So let's adjust that. Let's make the position cornered at the origin. So we use our X0 and Y0 parameters. And we want the height to be our defined H parameter. So we can enter H. And we can click Build Selected to update our geometry with these settings. Now you'll see we want to make a few adjustments. We'll need to move up the rectangle so that it lies within the center of our original circle. And we'll want to reduce the height so that the top also lies within the center of the top circle. So first, let's modify the height and subtract the length of the diameter of the circle and update that to C. So now we need to move the rectangle upward so it lies in the center of the circle using our radius parameter. And for the width, we want the width to be the diameter of the circle. So we just use two times our radius parameter. And with that, we have the two circles and rectangle that make up our first slot. So you can start to see how using parameters can be really helpful when you want to change the dimensions of any object in your geometry. Instead of having to go into each node and manually edit the quantity, you can simply change it in your parameters table, and then those changes are updated anywhere the parameter is used throughout your geometry sequence. So let's edit a few of these to demonstrate this. Let's say we wanted to change our original position along the x-axis to 0 0.1. Let's make the radius 5 centimeters and double the height. Now we go to the last geometric operation in our sequence before the form union node and click build selected. And you can see how that changed all of our geometry automatically. So let's just go back and restore our settings. The radius. Our position along the x-axis, the origin, and the height. And again, it's restored back to its original configuration. Now let's join all of these objects together, and we can do this by using a Boolean operation, union. So the objects that we want to unite together, we select again by clicking on them in the graphics window. We don't want to keep the interior boundaries, so we deselect this option, and then we can click build, and here we have our first slot. At this point, you may start to notice that we take on a pattern as we are creating the geometry in the software. We start off with creating a primitive object, and we then edit the settings of that object using parameters and other means, and from there, we're able to perform geometric operations. And that's the procedure we go through repeatedly as we are building the geometry. Now we want to have an array of several copies of this exact same object. So to do that, we use an array operation. To include the objects we want to create an array of, we simply again click the object in the graphics window. And under the size for array type, there are two options to choose from. We can either create a rectangular array or a linear array. And we want to create an array of objects along both axes, so we choose rectangular. For the x size, 
So the number of copies along the x-axis that we want, we specify 4. And then along the y-axis, we specify 2. Once again, this is an opportunity for us to use parameters. So we can go click the parameters node and in our table, let's call the parameters xnum for the number of copies along the x-axis and ynum for the number of copies along the y-axis. And we can return to our array node and enter in those parameters for the respective values. For the displacement, this is where we define how far the objects are spaced between each other. For the spacing along the x-axis, let's do about three times our radius parameter. So we enter that in. And for the y-axis, let's do the height in addition to our radius parameter. We click build and then zoom extents. And here we have our array of the first slots within our rectangular plate. Now we can use a mirror operation to create the larger spacing or gap between the first eight slots and the second group of eight slots. And again, we select the objects we want to mirror and this time, instead of clicking each object individually, we can use the select box to select all of the objects at once. Please see our videos on selections for more information on this and other selection tools in the software. Since we want to keep the original objects in our array as well as the mirrored copy, we select the keep input objects checkbox and now to define the normal vector to the line of reflection, we keep these values as they are since we want the normal vector to lie on the x-axis. That way, our reflection line lies along the y-axis. To define the point on our line of reflection, we can sort of eyeball it and see we could use 0.15 meters as a value. Or we could, however, use any of the parameters that we've already defined to specify the point as well. But just for the sake of time, we'll keep this value we entered. Click Build Selected, and you can see we have all of these slots for our rectangular plates. Now we can create the large rectangle that would be encompassing all of these slots in the rectangular plate. We could again add this object by going under the Primitives button and selecting Rectangle. However, please note that for 2D objects, you can also draw the objects right within the graphics window by selecting the primitive object within the draw section on the geometry ribbon tab. So if we click rectangle, you'll see we are now able to draw the rectangle right within the graphics window. So we can go ahead and do that, just sort of eyeball it. And there we have our rectangular plate. If our drawing of the object is not precise, we can always edit the dimension and location of the rectangle from the settings window. Now all we need is a difference operation to subtract the slot objects from the rectangular object. Under objects to add, you can see the active switch is toggled to on. And that means any objects that we select right now in the graphics window will be added. So we want to add the large rectangle. So we click on that object. And now under objects to subtract, we make sure to turn the active switch on. And you can see the active switch turns to off for our added objects, locking this selection. And now any geometry we select will go under the objects to subtract section. So again, we can use the select box to choose all of our slot objects. And now we can click build selected and we have created our 2D rectangular plate with an array of slots within it. Lastly, all we have to do is click form union and build all. Please note that all of the geometry operations we performed throughout this tutorial can also be found in the model tree by right-clicking the geometry node and selecting the appropriate option. Whether it's creating primitive objects, adding Boolean and partition operations, 
or transformation operations. It can all be found here as well. So I hope this video has given a good overview as to how to go about creating a 2D geometry in Comsa Multiphysics. As we went about creating this geometry, you'll notice we built each object using the same procedure. We first roughly drew the object so that it showed up in the model tree and graphics window. Then we went in and modified the object to have the dimensions and position we needed by editing the settings. At that point, we started implementing parameters in our geometry, which we were able to reuse on several occasions as we kept building our geometry sequence. From there, we performed geometric operations to combine the objects. These can include Boolean, transformation, or even partitioning operations. Lastly, we finalized the geometry, which you can find out more about in our Form Union Form Assembly tutorial video.